I'm Leslie Adams, and I'm playing Dottie. I'm Adam Saunders, and I am the director and the writer and the lead actor and the producer uh, of Dottie and Soul. Well, Adam's great. He, you know, he wrote the movie, starring the movie, directing the movie. That's a, that's a big load. So I'm really impressed uh, how he puts it all together because I know I couldn't do that. Okay, I know it's a bit confusing. <laughs> it's not confusing at all. You did something racist. So now you need my black face to save your white ass. I wouldn't phrase it like that. The main character, Ethan, he goes to a Halloween party and does an impersonation of MC Hammer and, you know, is in blackface and it becomes this whole media scandal. That's right, that's right. And so it's, it's, it's a great dynamic in the film because you have Ethan that comes from the world of, uh, hey, hey, I'm making money and I'm doing this and I'm creating this kind of stuff, but he has no sensitivity when it comes to what he says. We can talk about these important things, but have fun and talk about them in a lighter way. My name is Gary Owen, and I play Diggy. I mean, Diggy's a lawyer, but when I really dug into the character, I don't know how he got through law school. <laughs> <laughs> is it a match? You bet! I didn't think I was gonna echo that loud. I was just like, you bet! And I was like, you bet, you bet, you bet, you bet. Diggy has a line, or two lines, and then I'll say, Gary, just do one for you, whatever you want to say. Invariably, that's in the cut. Big, beautiful wings like a bald eagle. Soaring over a nest before she eats a salmon. Majority of the time, I think if you hire a comedian, you're hiring them to take risks. Ah! Ah! So I, I like the fact that Adam lets us take risks than the script. My character's gonna be Brannigan. He's a hard-charging uh, con man, if you will, but an investor, so he's uh, all about money. Doesn't seem to have a conscience. If this deal dies, your career's deader than a can of corned beef. I like corned beef. Yeah, I call it a uh, light villain. You never get to be that rude in real life. Dottie is a threat to Brannigan. Well, she's a threat to him. She's a threat to uh, a lot of people because they don't expect her to be a businesswoman, but they don't know her past. So you were a chef? I was a chef. I did the marketing. I ran the books. Even though the circumstances are kind of weird how she and Ethan come together, it's a situation where they learn from each other. And I think that's what we have to do now. We have to learn from each other. It's about being true to yourself and about not trying so hard to to dance for the crowd. And the face of that change is this toilet paper dragging bastard right here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't walk on red carpet, I walk on toilet paper. You wanna know why? Why? Cause I'm a shit. <laughs> it's a private car. It's a private car. He, he's so desperate to make his parents proud and so desperate to make his investor proud and so desperate to be the guy. The movie is about stripping all that away. Both Dottie and, and Ethan are both diamonds, you know, but Dottie's diamond has been sort of fogged over. Society has not allowed her to shine. And Ethan has painted his diamond with fake diamond paint. And so this is about two diamonds kind of like shining each other. Dottie? Well, now, this young lady must be... Dorothy Jean Bolden, a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. My name is... Bob Brannigan. <laughs> no introduction necessary. Been wanting to make your acquaintance for years. I told her that the theme of the movie was it's never too late. And I like her version better. Everything happens in its time. My mother used to say, you look around one corner and it comes around the other. And that's what happens to Dottie. Do you accept black? Amex Black, that is. <laughs> Two, please. Whenever it's supposed to go is when it goes, and that's that's true in, in the making of this movie, too. We started talking about filming this movie in 2019, and we ended up pushing to 2020, because um, we thought, why not? What could go wrong? A worldwide pandemic hit 15 days into our shoot. <laughs> and we had to shut everything down. <laughs>
when we first shut down, you thought, well, maybe it be a couple weeks or something like that. We went back in August. Then we we're supposed to do December. Canceled again. I kept thinking, I could be in a wheelchair by the time we get to finish this movie. This is like a James Cameron film right now because it's taking over a year. We may have already shot the sequel. Did somebody say acquisition? I think you just did. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share? Because I could talk to you for the rest of the day. <laughs> well, any more, and you won't have to go see the movie. <laughs> I gotta keep some secrets. <laughs>